When The Voice Holland first aired, it was hard to believe the show would become one of the most popular singing competitions around the world. But despite its popularity, The Voice is hiding some pretty dark secrets. Have you ever wondered why none of the winners actually became international sensations? Keep on watching to find out. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to The Taco for more videos like this one. Now, let's check out the 10 dark secrets The Voice doesn't want you to know. The Contracts Let's start with the topic people are interested in the most. By now, the entire world knows that these singing reality shows aren't as innocent as they seem. You can't just show up, audition, and hope for the best. Everyone that signs up on The Voice has to also sign a pretty controversial contract. The media got its hands on a 32-page long document from the show, and it outlines exactly what the show expects from its contestants. The Voice can change the rules at any time and eliminate popular contestants. But one of the scariest things these contracts entail is the right to force the contestants into psychological examinations, and the results of those examinations can be shared on TV. Contestants that reveal any kind of details of these contracts can also be sued for up to $1 million. The singers also have to agree that the show is allowed to be completely defamatory to one's character and even expose them to public ridicule. And by the looks of it, The Voice won't really do anything if that actually happens. The contestants basically agree that The Voice is allowed to portray them in a bad light. Seems pretty harsh for a show that's supposed to be all about feeling good and showcasing people's talents, right? Secret Auditions when The Voice was first introduced, the show focused on the fact that the contestants were able to showcase raw talent. It didn't matter what you looked like. As long as you could sing, you'd get in. But it looks like that's not entirely true. It turns out that the contestants have to go through plenty of stages before they actually make it into the audition you see on TV. The judges aren't the only ones that say yes or no to these contestants. They also have to audition for the producers. And to make things even more nerve-wracking, it's a group audition. A group of individuals gets sent into a room and they have to sing one verse and one chorus of a song, and that determines whether they get sent to another round. So while you might only see a handful of people actually being chosen for the show, the truth is there are tens of thousands of singers that have never made it through to the first stage of the audition process. But that's not all it takes to make it through. Keep watching to find out everything that happens before you make it onto the stage. Talent Hunters the Voice, just like many other shows, also has talent hunters. These are the people that send invitations to talented individuals and encourage them to try out for the show. Some of them have to go through the first stages of the auditions, but a lot of them are also instantly sent through the auditions you see on the TV. That was the case for a singer called Jason Isbell. The show's producers actually reached out to Jason's management and asked if he would be interested in auditioning. They also made it clear that these were industry-only auditions and that the contestants didn't have to go through the open call auditions, which also means that these talent hunters most likely prioritize people they know would be a good fit for the show, which consequently slims the chances of regular contestants who are desperate to make it through the audition process. Jason turned these auditions down as he knows exactly what happens behind the scenes of these so-called talent shows, and he let everyone know about it. He also stated that if he won the show, he'd have way less creative control and smaller revenue, which is true for most contestants as well as the voice winners. A long process. But if you think the process of getting that blind audition is actually quick, we can tell you right now it's not. According to former contestants, several months can pass in between having your first audition and the actual blind auditions. Before the actual filming, the contestants get trained for every possible situation. They know what to do in case they faint or get sick on stage, or how they'd react if none of the coaches would turn around. This is why it might not always be a big deal to some of the contestants that get absolutely no returns. They've been trained and well prepared for the reaction. But according to other contestants, this totally depends on the season and the actual individual, which makes this show so much more frustrating. The contestants also spend weeks with the vocal coach and the band before they even make it to the blind auditions to make sure the judges only hear the best of the best. It really does make you wonder how much of the voice is actually genuine apart from the talented individuals that are brave enough to go through the audition process. However, the contestants do say that the training actually brings them together and a lot of them make genuine friendships before they head to the blind auditions. Song Choices 
In a 2016 interview, Tom Jones stated that he was forced to pick contestants he didn't actually like, and sometimes it all comes down to the song choice. The song choice is a mutual decision between the contestant and the show. But the truth is, you don't only just practice one song, sing it, and hope for the best. You have to present several choices throughout the audition process, which includes a stage no one actually thinks about. But we'll talk more about that later. The producers note that sometimes the contestants really have no idea what they're capable of. In that case, the show decides the vocal capabilities of the contestant and picks the song that's best for them. That's why sometimes it feels like the contestant ended up with a totally wrong song. According to the show, the contestants are able to choose and even chance their song. But this gets a lot harder as the contestants hit the live battle stage and have to sing a song in pairs and sometimes in groups. And while not a lot of people are able to report what really happens when it comes to song choices, we have a feeling the voice isn't that different from American Idol, where people are forced to sing certain songs. Studio Performance have you ever wondered how the band seems to know every song rendition the contestants choose to sing? The public seems to think that they just get handed the song and come up with their thing, but the process is actually much more complicated than that. Prior to the blind auditions, the contestants spend weeks with the band trying to practice their rendition. The band also sometimes suggests to the contestant how to make that rendition better and some of the musical twists they could use to stand out. Many have reported that the staff doesn't get enough credit for the work they do on The Voice, and by the looks of it, that's definitely true. The contestants also have a studio performance before they head to the blind auditions. They have to record three songs that then get passed to the voice's musical master. He then works with the contestant to change the arrangement wherever necessary. Then, they actually have a rehearsal for the blind audition. This means that they hit the stage, but without the pressure of having the judges facing them and without having the audience present. And here we thought they just walk straight in the building, wait in the wings, sing their hearts out, and watch their dreams come true not a lot of coaching. So how much coaching do the contestants really get from their judges? Everyone's always excited to be coached and critiqued by their idol, but is it really a life-changing experience and a mentorship everyone thinks it is? The truth is, the coaching from the band, the producers, and the rest of the voice staff is far greater than the coaching you get from the celebrities. One of the contestants noted that whenever she met with Shakira for rehearsal, it was only to film the show's tape segments. They only coached with her a few times, but were left to their own devices the rest of the time. A contestant also noted that at some point, they even squeezed in some rehearsal time in a janitor closet because it had a piano. Contestants also note that you don't actually become BFFs with your coach. The relationship you develop is strictly professional. Your celebrity coach won't become your psychiatrist unless the voice wants to turn your story into a so-called sob story. So overall, more of the coaching actually comes from the voice staff and the producers rather than the celebrity coaches and their guests. And yes, even though the coaches end up taking all the credit for the artist's vocal development. Ignoring votes. The voice contracts also have one of the biggest clauses that basically makes the whole show look scripted and fake, and it's not just being able to eliminate contestants that are the most popular with the public. They can also completely ignore the voting system and choose the person they think is the best for whatever reason. This means that no matter how much money you might spend on votes, they won't matter. Because the show can change that no matter what. Seems a bit strange, right? Why should you vote and spend money on someone when there's no 100% chance that this person would actually win? It's one of the most most outrageous clauses in their contracts, and it definitely doesn't help the claims that the show is fake. We've seen plenty of contestants win, even though their runner-ups were far more popular and talented. The public was always outraged, but the show didn't do anything to address the situation. At least now we know that this was in their contracts all along. We bet you can name at least one The Voice contestant that left the show way earlier than they deserved. Well, this is why. It was decided by the show no matter how many votes they actually get. Controversial Moments the Voice is no stranger to controversial moments that make you think about things that happen behind the scenes. In one of the UK seasons, Tom Jones was basically forced to take a contestant after his fellow judge Will I Am turned her down. Will ended up going behind Tom's chair and chanted Tom's name along with the audience. Even though it was clear that Tom wasn't planning on picking her, he gave in to the pressure. The public was outraged by the fact that he was forced into it, and that wasn't the only controversial moment the show has seen. When the UK contestant Jamie Miller was out 
of the competition, one man appeared to have been so outraged, he actually jumped on stage and wanted to tackle either the host or the contestant with the sign. He was unsuccessful, but it was scary to watch that happen during the live shows. We've also seen contestants pull out of the competition hours before the UK live show. One popular contestant had to leave after her past issues with illegal substances were brought to the limelight. The Voice Philippines has also been accused of favoritism after the judges made some pretty irrational choices over who's going to be led through the next stages. Unsuccessful Winners have you ever wondered what happens to the winners of The Voice? It seems like the show never seems to produce artists that have the same international popularity as some of the contestants we see on American Idol or Britain's Got Talent. But winning The Voice doesn't really guarantee anything. It seems like it all comes down to the deal with the record label the winners sign to, and even the judges know that. The judges have said it time and time again that the winners seem to have very little support from the record label, and that's precisely why you've never seen most winners of this show have the success they deserve. The Voice Voice seems to promise its contestants the ultimate American dream and a chance to become a singing sensation. But the show has also been criticized as it seems to be failing to deliver just that. How many of the Voice winners do you know that have actually reached the same level of fame as Kelly Clarkson or Jennifer Hudson? And by the looks of it, it seems that many contestants and those that get invited into the auditions know this. So why is the Voice promising something it really can't deliver? And that's it for our video. What do you think of The Voice? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to The Taco. See you next time!